Uh, what's going on everybody? Ratchet Wrench is back for another video and today we have the privilege of doing a review on a 2020 Honda Accord. This is the sport model and let's get into it. So as always we start with the front end. As you can see this is a very aggressive front end. You got, we'll start down here, it's got a nice grill. It's almost like a black chrome to it. I don't know if that's something you're interested in but I think the black chrome complements this gray exterior very well. Um, if you make your way down here you have LED daytime running lights and LED headlights so you're super bright you see down the road extremely far and it just gives you that feel of like the BMW and Mercedes and those really bright blue lights so if you make your way down here to the fog lights those are also going to be LED and it's nice you got lines that go with it which actually have functioning vents compared to other cars in this um, particular price range which is actually 27k sticker price for the sport model they have functioning air vents which channel the air to the inside of the car like right over here so it's going to cool down those brakes but if you come over here you can see minus this ugly black um, license plate frame you have the Honda sensing which is pretty much your adaptive cruise control your lane departure and we'll get into that when we work into the um, inside of the vehicle with all the um, luxuries and amenities but that's right in the middle it's not an eye sort of look at I mean it kind of changes the front end because you have that big square but it blends in with that black chrome as well if we make our way up here you have some nice body lines that actually go throughout the whole exterior of the vehicle then you have these two really sharp angled hood lines which give you like I said in the beginning that aggressive style it makes it really sporty because this is the Honda Accord Sport we're gonna open up the hood and we'll show you what we're working with power plant wise so as you can see here this is pretty simple Honda engine this is the 1.5 liter Accord they also do um, offer a 2.0 which is these are both turbo so they do have the 2.0 the 2.0 actually comes in a six-speed manual and of course automatic but this particular model is a CVT transmission I don't know if you guys are familiar with that but it's just pretty much one um, continuous gear and it makes it kind of recreates the individual gears up to seven speed in this vehicle I'm not a big fan of the CVT but it does help with that gas mileage of course, this is getting 29 um, miles per gallon on the city driving, and then highway, you're averaging 39 miles per gallon. That's extremely crucial in this day and age with you know gas prices going up and longer commute. So that definitely does help out. There's not much to really talk about this. It's pretty much the same as you know previous generations. It's that 1.5 liter turbo, very clean, very simple, very easy to um, work on. If you're familiar with cars, everything's right up top. If not, you know, go to the dealer and it's very cheap. But Hondas are very notorious for, you know, lasting very long and going the, the long shot. So now we're going to work around to the exterior and just pretty much continue reviewing this car. So we're going to make our way to the um, tires down here, tires and rims. These are 19 inch aluminum rims and these are beautiful i love what honda did with this style it's got that black chrome and of course the brushed aluminum finish on the front facing side these are 235 40 19 inch rims they pair this car perfectly they're good years so they're good brand tire but we're gonna make our way up here like i said with the hood line you have those lines that run through consistently throughout the whole car you can see this one kind of goes right to here with that aggressive um, headlight assembly so it runs all the way back we're gonna just kind of skip that area. It's got a low roof line, which kind of gives it, once again, that aggressive, sporty feel. Um, but you can fit comfortably in there if you're six foot. I'm 5'11", sometimes six on a good day, you know. But um, you can sit in there very comfortably with this low roof line. Um, here's your standard pop cap. But we're gonna make our way to here. You got a little lip spoiler, which I think is on point. It complements the car. The one thing I do not like about this car is what they people refer to it as the stapler it looks like a stapler tail light not a fan of that i don't know why they did this um, little gap there if it was me and i was designing the car i'd personally give it that full complete look or just do it a little different route um, but yeah you got some reflectors down here you got dual exhaust chrome tips they are non-functioning tips the exhaust pipe actually dips below it i think that's very chachi um, I know a lot of manufacturers do that just to um, save costs and stuff like that. It gets the job done. You have your third brake light up here. Of course, you have the lines on the um, rear window, which are act as the defrosters. But now we're going to open up the trunk room because I know a lot of people are using this sedan as a family car slash daily driver. Um, excuse the mess. My mom actually just bought this car the other day, so she's using it. Of course, she's taking advantage of this 
bunch of trunk room. You, look at this, just look for yourself. There's plenty of room. She's got, you know, her yoga mats, a um, bunch of miscellaneous, oh, some cheese nips. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of room in this. So if you are a daily driver, and you want, if you're looking for a daily driver, like a sedan, like this style, definitely functional. You can put your groceries in here, you know, um, if you have kids, you could store stuff in here. So we're gonna make our way inside. Before we get into the front, we're just gonna show you the rear. Like I said, I'm 5'11", and um, this is plenty of room. Look, my head clears just enough. I mean, yeah, if I really try, I could hit it. But it's very spacious, very roomy back here. You can fit three people comfortably. Of course, it's being occupied. But you have a little um, cup holder here, two cup holder, leather finish. I think the seats are perfect. They got leather and they got this kind of suede material and they got a nice consistent, I don't know if it's um, real stitching, but it could be that fake stitching that a lot of manufacturers use. One thing I really don't like about this car in the rear seat for um, luxuries is there's no air vents. No air vents for the rear passengers. Yeah, I know you have the dual climatic control up front, which you know generates cold air back here and everything, but not as quick as a car would with functioning vents back here. And another thing is there's no USB cable or any 12 volt outlet, which I think is kind of a downfall. Yeah, we could do the one up there, but it would just be nice to have some back here. I know a lot of other manufacturers that are competitors with this exact model have that option. But we're gonna make our way into the front. Actually, before I go there, you can see the door's pretty simple, pretty basic. You got a little aluminum door handle. It's got a nice feel to it. Um, you got that brushed, almost like a matte black with chrome finish here. And it just complements it here with the window switch and then a couple cup holders as well. Just your basic style door trim. But now we're gonna make our way into the front. So we made our way inside the driver's seat. It's very comfortable, it's very spacious. And I hate to keep using the same adjectives, but it's very hard to come up with anything else because this is what it's designed for. It's that sporty feel. Um, Let's turn on this infotainment system here. So up here you have a very sleek 8 inch infotainment system. Um, it actually has this protective layer on it which prevents it from you know getting glare into your eyes. I know a lot of people don't really like the touch screen and everything so you could do the manual buttons on the side here. But I'm a fan of the you know this is the way cars are going and the technology and everything. So I like to go through it all. I'm not going to go in-depth tutorial about this because it's all in the manual so if you're really interested in looking into this car definitely check out the manual it comes with apple carplay and android auto which is a nice touch because you know not everyone has that apple iphone but we'll make our way down here you have a dual climatic control system doesn't have seat warmers or um seat air conditioning i know a lot of other competitors do but in the next model up they do offer that stuff um, if you work down here, you got a really deep little cubby. You have a USB port, and then you have a 12-volt outlet, which is just very convenient. I don't know if it's real leather, but it's a leather finish. Um, gear shifter, you just got park, reverse, neutral, and drive. And then, of course, down here, you have sport mode and econ. So if you want to get the best gas mileage and um, save your money, you put it in the econ mode, or you could put in the sport and have some fun with it. The sport pretty much simulates the shifting of what a regular transmission would be. Like I said, this is a CVT. But you have an electronic park brake, and you have brake hold. So if you're on a uh, hill and you want to take your foot off the brake, just rest it a little bit. You can just press that button right there, and it will lock in place until you're ready to go. And once you press the gas, it will disengage that. You got two cup holders here, very basic. And she's of course using this very roomy in here. And again, you have another 12 volt outlet. But other than that, it's your standard typical car. Like I said, in the rear seats, you have that white stitching that complements the gray along this whole vehicle. Um, up here, you have a soft dash, which is just very comfortable. And then I'm not sure what this is. It's almost like a carbon fiber look, but it's definitely not carbon fiber, which just kind of flows with the interior throughout the car, and it's on the doors as well. It's not in the rear. I don't know why they didn't complete it in the rear. It is what it is. Now we're going to go through this whole system here, so let's show you that. All right, so on your steering wheel, it's pretty much basic. Um, you have some analog sticks. You got the home button, return button, volume for the radio or um, your phone call. Of course, you have the hands-free, which every vehicle should be doing right now with the Bluetooth. You have your adaptive cruise control down here, which pretty much, if you're on the highway, keeps you a safe distance from the car in front of you. And then you have your lane departure, which kind of 
is a pretty scary feature if you're not ready for it. Like I didn't know that it had this and I was driving it and I kind of went out of the lane without turning your blinker on, it will kind of force you back into the um, proper lane. Controls are pretty much simplistic and the same as every other car. You know, your headlights, your wipers. But now let's get to the most important part, turn on the dash. Come on. All right, so you have, if you noticed already, you have analog on the right and then digital on the left. It's digital on the left because you could go through um, the buttons over here and switch whatever you want. Right now, we just have the speedometer um, or the RPMs, I mean. As you can see, when I press economy mode, it will change the interface. And then, of course, sport, it will change it big time. Um, you have pounds of boost, which is pretty neat. It does show you the PSI of boost in your turbo. Not many cars do that, so that's a pretty cool feature. But I'm not going to get into too much of um, an in-depth tutorial and go through all. Um, one cool thing is when you're driving, it will GPS locate the speed uh, rating of the highway or the road that you're on. It will pop up, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, you got your basic speedometer on the right. You got your fuel gauge. And of course, you have your coolant temps. But that's pretty much it for the infotainment and the inside of the vehicle now we're just gonna um go for some drives and show you how this thing really handles one thing i do want to mention to go along with the interior is the driver's seat has a fully electronic 11-way adjustable seat which is very comfortable you, you know do lumbar support uh side upholsteries um you know go back forward up lower whatever it is it's got 11-way adjustable and i think that's a very nice touch but now let's start it up very quiet, very quick to engage that starter. Yeah, safety first. All right, so let's go for a drive. First impressions, this um, steering wheel is very responsive. You point, it goes. This is an extremely good handling car. Let me tell you, you could take turns really fast and really agile, and it doesn't really have much body sway. Like, I just took that one <laughs> very fast. The cameraman definitely felt it. It's very easy to drive like i said it's responsive but we're going to have some fun with this and put it in sport mode we can even use the paddle shifters i'm not a fan of having paddle shifters on a cvt transmission i think it's very useless but i guess it makes you feel sporty so in sport mode this acceleration does give you does go pretty quick i will give you that you gotta overtake someone on the highway you could do it now let's go around this little circle um at a higher rate of speed Right, that was faster than I thought I wanted to take that, but still, this handled extremely well. And that was a very tight angled circle. This is fun to drive. The brakes are very responsive as well. They're, you know, you don't have to press really hard on them. Same with the gas pedal, especially in sport mode, you don't have to press on that gas pedal to um, lay down the um, power. Yeah, it's 195 horsepower. It's not the biggest engine is that 1.5 it's a little guy but it gets the job done it keeps you know the fuel economy well but here let's give it a little bit of gas it's very smooth with that cvt transmission you don't feel the gears changing at all uh, not really the biggest fan on cvt but it is the future it's comfortable it's comfortable to drive let's take this we'll go down this road here i'm not gonna lie it is fun to drive i will put it in the econ mode you definitely feel the power restrictions once again, the RPMs are going to be completely different in this mode because it's mostly focused on saving that gas mileage. So this is something you want to cruise in on the highway in econ mode. It just helps, you know, with, like I said, the gas mileage. So if you are in the market of a sedan like this, if you really want speed and more power, definitely upgrade. It's a little more money, but you'll get the best bang for your buck. That 2.0 turbo it does come with a standard automatic transmission and then the um, manual. If you really are a manual enthusiast and you like the Honda and you, you love the brand, that's one way to go. I think it's awesome that they're one of the few companies that continue to produce manual transmission cars in 2020. I know it's pretty much going extinct. Unfortunately, the 2.0 definitely has more power. Uh, this is a front wheel drive car, so you don't have that all wheel drive aspect. As you can see with those little flybys, this car isn't the fastest. It's very good on fuel economy and it's a comfortable daily driver. And it gets plenty of leg room back there. You could fit, you know, five people in here very comfortably. 
It's um, it's a, for twenty seven thousand dollars, you really can't go wrong. It's very affordable. But then again, like I said, if you want to upgrade, you can to the more performance model, and you'll really have that performance feel. But for the sport and the sticker price, this is a good buy. That's pretty much gonna wrap up the driving portion of this. There's really not much to talk about. Um, I just really want to emphasize how good the handling is. You could take turns. You could really lean into these turns if you wanted to. So one thing I wanna also mention is the fact that it's keyless entry and push to start, so. All right, guys, that's a wrap for today's video. We hope you enjoyed. If you have any other questions, just comment down below. Make sure to give us that big thumbs up. It helps us out tremendously. We have a bunch of other reviews. And don't forget to subscribe. But, yeah, for $27,000, this Honda Accord Sport is a pretty good bang for your buck. It might not be the fastest, but it's definitely reliable. Very good on fuel mileage. It's sharp, aggressive, and it gets the job done. So stay tuned to the next video. Ratchet Wrenches is out. Peace.